What's up, everybody? I'm Albie13. Today we're looking at Ladybird Web Browser. Something interesting that came across my desk. So, we're looking at this, and the first thing that I saw was there's no download button. Apparently, you need to build this at C++, C++ and you need to compile it. So that is a downside in to, at today. Uh, but um, I'm sure they're going to get builds going. Um, let's see here. So let's just talk about what it is. It's interesting. Um, I mean, we just need everything advanced. We need it. We need it because we we should have a competitor to Chrome and uh, the Chrome engine for web browsers. So we're looking at Ladybird, which is a independent, built from scratch, um, supported by nonprofit. It is a new web browser and new web engine. It does not use Chrome, um, anything like Chrome. It does its own web engine. And what they say is that it is driven by a web standards first approach and what does that mean to me as a developer that means that uh, they want to follow the web standards for building and displaying web pages and set everything else to be secondary so nothing intrudes upon that uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how this does but we're looking I'm looking here at the verbiage here copy and it says here they want to render a modern web with good performance, stability, and security. So they have their priorities um, set well. And so, let's see. They are talking about cross-platform for Linux, Mac OS, and uh, let's see here. It's under heavy development. An alpha release is set for early adopters in 2026. Well, that's long time, long time. So then, you know, we're just gonna look at this as uh, something that's coming out now. You know, cause like, you think about it, that sounds like a long time, but the web is gonna be important for the years to come. So this kind of stuff is, uh, is good. And I just think that we need a alternative to Chrome and uh, that's partly what motivated me to build the Tanuki web browser which is a text-based browser that's obviously not going to replace a graphical traditional web browser this is designed to compete with Firefox Opera Chrome Edge all the all, the, all those and then is there anything else interesting on the website uh, they have a Discord server, they have a GitHub, they have a picture of what it looks like. This is nice, clean setup, Linux-like. Let's see, and that's about it, so I can't even really see much, but I can do this. Kind of cheated a little bit. We can see on the right, Ladybird, and uh, clean with a dark theme, back, forward, reload, or refresh, so it supports secure socket layer, HTTPS, encryption, so modern web standards, and that's about it. Uh, ended up being quite a short video. I'm sure there's more to talk about. But their website is a little bit light. And uh, basically, you can get the code for the web browser. You can build it, as they say. And oh, there's some interesting stuff down here. Um, they have six paid full time engineers working on this web browser a large community of volunteer contributors they say it uses various libraries from the serenity os project 
And of course, the Windows question. They don't have anyone actively working on the Windows support. There are considerable changes required to make it work well outside of a Unix-like environment. Um, we would like to do Windows eventually, but it's not the priority. So I know this sounds very removed from Windows, but essentially you can have a virtual environment, um, Hyper-V, a virtual box you can set up Linux on your Windows system and then it's just a window in your windows and then you maximize Ladybird and then there you go all of a sudden you have a uh, technically probably a much safer more secure platform because it's gonna be sandboxed in Linux uh, which is supposed to be more uh, secure in nature and then you're going to probably avoid a lot of uh, targeted malware from Windows so it's not a bad thing uh, if you're a little bit techy and not really, I mean, you can follow guides and set up um, virtual Linux. Uh, Mint is great, and uh, you know, Ubuntu is the popular one, and there's some new things coming. So, for Linux, I mean, there's some stuff that's getting popular, I mean. And then, uh, let's see here. Why build a new, the new browser in C? I mean, the question, I mean, C is powerful, so let's see. Safer and more modern languages are available. Wow, I mean, they really went for a, a, a crazy loaded question there. Uh, what's safer? I mean, C++ is old, but it's considered modern. So what are they really talking about here? Um, it, they, they're, when they started coding it, it only allowed C++. <clears throat> the choice of language is not so much a technical decision, but more a personal convenience. They were, they were most comfortable with C++, and now uh, we have almost half a million lines, so 500,000 lines. That creates a robust uh, web browser. Uh, so they're saying that they don't have constraints now that it's forked and become an independent project. They evaluated a number of alternatives, and they will begin incremental adoption of Swift. As a successor language, once Swift version 6 is released. Wow. Um, oh. Oh. Okay. I didn't know about this. So we've been evaluating, etc. Okay. So, I mean, this is really technical. If you're still sticking around and you care about this. Make sure you like, subscribe, dislike, comment, whatever it is. Thank you. But anyway, uh, why do they like Swift? Swift? I've heard about this Swift. Swift has both memory and data race safety as of version 6, which they really are focusing on. Modern language, more modern than C++, indeed. Uh, solid ergonomics, whatever that means. Sometimes that matters to us a lot. Something that matters to us a lot. Oh, oh, web spaces, browser, internals tend to be highly object-oriented. Oh, oh, object-oriented. Life is easier when you can model specs closely in your code. Swift has a first class um, object oriented support. Even nicer than C. C is old by comparison to a modern language, so it's understandable. There's a reason why there's modern languages, and they didn't just stop with what we had. The Swift team is also investing heavily in C interop. There's a real path to incremental adoption, not just gigantic rewrites. Okay, that's interesting. Interoper. Okay, so they can have the code basically, you know, translating or, you know, working together with Swift or whatever. Or partial changeovers. Yes, I don't know. Interesting. Definitely interesting. Swift has historically been tied to Apple and their platforms. That's interesting, uh, the back history on Swift. In the last year, there's been a Swift Lang push to become more independent, which it should be. It's now in a separate GitHub organization, no longer in Apple. For example, support for non-Apple platforms is also improving, as is the support for other LSP-based development environments. It's interesting because, you know, Apple's always been a smaller software so why would you specialize and package it with Apple unless it's... I mean, a web language has to be... 
people you want you need people to want to support it and they're not going to want to support it as much if it's only for mac os apple but anyway what happens next uh, we aren't able to start using it just yet current release yeah they're talking about version 6 coming out this fall so uh interesting stuff happening here no language language is perfect there's a lot of things here we don't know yet i'm not aware of anyone doing browser engine stuff in swift before yeah a little un um but that's good because uh they have a really clear objective with what they want to make interesting so they're not satisfied with c plus plus it's a takeaway all right well thanks for watching that's it for this video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.